Hello class, this is uh, Mr. Winton. Welcome to AP Biology. This is the first of many screencasts that I'm going to be making for you throughout this semester. Um, we are going to be trying some new things this year and uh, hopefully it works out for you. I am going to be trying to flip my class, so you'll, we'll, we'll talk about this a lot more in class, but one of the things that's involved in that are these little screencasts. And so I'm going to be making some of these uh, and keep it so you can be watching them at home at night. And I want you to give me feedback. I want you to let me know what you think about them. If they're too long, they're too short, um, do you like uh, more detail, less detail, different information. And um, we're going to just going to be learning together this year as we go along. Now this first one that we're going to doing is from your chapter two. This was your summer assignment. So hopefully you already completed that and are getting ready to take your test. And uh, this will hopefully help you in that. One of the first things this chapter talks about is this cool little beetle. It's called a bombardier beetle. And uh, this beetle when it's threatened, if you want to take a second here and watch this little short YouTube clip, hopefully it works. We'll try it and see here. Now, if you notice in that video clip that um, when this little beetle is threatened, what it does, it will emit this boiling hot liquid from its abdomen. It's, it's really cool. What it does, actually inside of its abdomen, it houses these two separate liquids that are chemically unreactive by themselves. But what happens is whenever they emit them from their body, they combine together and when they do so, a chemical reaction takes place and they become this boiling hot liquid. And you can kind of see that in a little video. You can see the, it almost looks like smoke coming off of them. So it's really cool. It's quite a good deterrent and uh, as a, a self-defense mechanism by this little beetle. But it's just one of the many aspects of how chemistry and biology are related. And um, it's kind of a good way to introduce this chapter. Now, the first part of this chapter is going to be a quick review for you. This is actually a pre-AP subject, is that's what this is in this chapter 2 here. And uh, hopefully you covered most of this in your physical science class last year. If not, we'll go over it real quickly here. Of course, you know all organisms are composed of matter. And uh, matter is made up of elements. And of course, you're familiar with elements from your periodic table. And elements are, are um, cannot, they cannot be broken down any further than they are. So you know, like oxygen and hydrogen things like that, they're not going to be broken down any further than that. And of course you know that the uh, basic building blocks of all elements are atoms, right? Atoms. A-T-O-M-S. And it's a cool thing your book tells you about how if you had, um, it would take about a million atoms to, uh, it would stretch across a period at the end of a sentence. So that's just kind of mind-boggling to me. Uh, can't comprehend something that small, but um, there are about, um, speaking of these elements, there's about four basic elements that, that really our bodies are composed of, and they make up about 96% of our body, and those are oxygen, carbon, hydrogen, and the last one is nitrogen. And uh, these make up about 96% of the human body. Oxygen is going to be the biggest. And of course, most of the human body you know of is made up of, about 75% is made up of water. So it makes sense that oxygen would be the most abundant element in your body. Now, a lot of times I ask people, why is it hydrogen? Because if you take a water molecule, water molecule has one oxygen and two hydrogens. Why is it then that oxygen is so much more abundant than hydrogens? And it's just simply the size of oxygen. Oxygen is a much larger uh, atom than uh, hydrogen is. So uh, they're, they're much larger, so they're going to make up more mass of your body than this, these little tiny hydrogens are going to. So uh, there are other elements that, are, that, are, that show up in much smaller amounts, like calcium and phosphorus and uh, iron, zinc, things like that. And uh, those, those play a vital role. They're just not near as bun abundant as these these four here. So let's go ahead and move on here. Of course you know you should know that a compound is basically the combination of two elements that are chemically combined. And we will talk more about compounds later. We'll talk about covalent um, molecules and 
ionic and it, molecules, and these are talking about different types of bonds, and, and there basically are two or more elements that are chemically combined. Now, the subatomic particles here you should be familiar with. You have your, uh, can I get my favorite color, green? We've got neutrons. What kind of charge do a neutrons have? Neutral, right. Uh, and then you have protons, and what kind of charge uh, do protons have? A positive charge. Of course, you know that protons and neutrons are found in the nucleus of an atom. Now, then there's one more subatomic particle, and this this thing out here, electrons. And what kind of charge do electrons have? They have electric charges, right? No, <laughs> just tricked you. Uh, they don't. Of course, we know they don't have electric charge. They have negative charges. And of course, protons have the positive charge, and neutrons have that neutral charge. So the main ones that we will be dealing with are electrons. Okay, these are really in biology. We talk a lot about electrons, not so much about protons and neutrons. We will talk about those a little bit. Um, but again, primarily you're going to be dealing with electrons because they're the ones that are involved in the chemical bonding, which is so important for us. So let's go ahead and clear this off here, and let's kind of look at electrons a little more closely. Now, one of the things that's cool, that's an important feature of electrons, is kind of where energy is found. Okay, energy is going to be found in these electrons. Now, a couple things I want to mention is real briefly that your book talks about here is that as you move further away oops wrong button uh, alright there we go as you move further away from your nucleus energy is going to be absorbed okay and it's basically like potential energy so this potential energy is uh, as you is, think about a kind of a, a, a rock on top of a hill as it moves up that hill it's building up potential energy as that electron falls back towards the nucleus it releases energy it's giving off the energy and, and uh, it's more of that kinetic energy so that is an important feature of electrons and we'll talk more about that when we get into uh, a couple of my favorite subjects that we'll talk about uh, later on in the year, photosynthesis, and uh, it's not real neat there, and cellular respiration, and they play a big role, electrons do, in both of these processes that are vital to our functioning, all right? So, anyway, so that's a little bit about electrons and, and their energy. So let's clear that off and let's talk a little bit more about electrons. Now, another feature of electrons are um, this term called valence electrons. Now, if you look at this element here, okay, this element has six protons and six neutrons. Now, if you're familiar with your elements, then you should know that this element is carbon. Okay, carbon has six protons, and uh, of course, if it has six protons, it has six neutrons. Now, that also, that's its atomic number, that also indicates how many electrons that it has. So, if you look at this carbon uh, molecule here, this carbon atom, and we notice that it has two electrons right here, and then it has four right here. Now, these electrons are found in these shells. Now, there's kind of a rule of thumb here, is in the first shell, of any element, okay, all the elements are the same way. The first shell is going to have a maximum of two electrons in it. The second shell is going to have a maximum of eight electrons in it. And then the third shell is also going to have a maximum of, of eight electrons. Now these are, this is the number of electrons that these elements want to have in order to be stable. Okay, that's very important for them to be stable. And, um, they are not stable in their elemental form. Very few of them. There are a few that are. And you're, you're familiar with those. They're over there on the right-hand side of your periodic table. Those are your noble gases. Helium, argon, xenon, things like that. Those all have a... a uh, their outer shell is full in their elemental form. Everything else is not full in its outer shell. So it has to bond with things to make them stable. So this term here, valence electrons, is really referring to 
this outermost shell. Okay, you see the outermost shell. That are the valence electrons. Those are the ones that are going to be actively involved in the chemical bonding. These two aren't going to be involved in the chemical bonding, just these outer ones here. So um, then gives you a little bit. Again, what they want, they're striving to have a full outer shell. So if you look at this carbon, for example, carbon has these four in its outer shell. A good, uh, you could, good rule, so let's look at another element, hydrogen. Hydrogen's got one electron, so it's not, doesn't have a full, it wants to have two, okay, in its first shell. So what it's, hydrogen's going to do is going to come in here, it's going to bring an electron, and it's going to bond with that electron right there that carbon has. And then another hydrogen's going to come in here, bring its electrons, going to bond there. Another one's going to come in here and bond right there. And then another one's going to come in and bond right there. And what you do here, you have this car, this molecule card called CH4, otherwise known as methane. So, and now you have a stable compound. You have all these carbon. Now carbon has how many electrons in its outer shell? It has two, four, six, eight. And if you look, each one of these hydrogens has now two electrons in its out, its first shell and its outermost shell. So it has two, it has two, it has two, and it has two. Now we'll talk more about that a little bit later in this chapter, but I wanted to go ahead and stop this first video here. It's about 11 minutes long, and this will be part one of this chapter number two, and I will continue uh, the rest of it on a separate video.